Scientists are on alert after an invasive seagrass that has spread throughout the Caribbean has now been discovered flourishing here in South Florida. But what that means to our local marine ecosystem is still not known. It could be a problem since it appears to be increasing. Here's tonight's Don't Trash Our Treasure. Beneath the murky surface of the waters at Crandon Marina, a foreign invader has taken root. I think everyone is holding their collective breath to try and understand whether this will pose a major threat to the ecosystems here in South Florida. This is Halophilus diphilacea, a type of seagrass native to the Indian Ocean, but that has now found a new home at the bottom of Biscayne Bay. And we're standing at Crandon Marina, which is actually ground zero for the first occurrence of this species in the continental U.S. waters. Justin Campbell is a seagrass expert and assistant professor at FIU. He says the invasive grass was only discovered here last month by an environmental consultant doing bottom surveys of the marina. And notice that something looked off, that this was a species that he did not recognize. But the research team at FIU knew exactly what it was. For years, marine scientists have been tracking the migration of Halophilus diphilacea after it first appeared and proliferated throughout the Caribbean in the early 2000s. We actually think it came to uh, Crandon Marina by vessel, by either sailboat or motorboat or something like that, that was traveling from other areas in the Caribbean. But is it friend or is it foe? This invasive species could eventually displace and overtake some of our native seagrasses. There is some data in other areas of the Caribbean, which is driving and fueling the concern that that might happen here in South Florida. For decades, Biscayne Bay has been losing acres of native seagrasses due to excessive nutrient pollution, especially in the northern Tuttle Basin, where as much as 90% coverage has disappeared. The arrival of this new intruder could be a game changer. Well, certainly it could potentially disrupt the, the marine ecosystems that we have here. And Campbell believes given the size of this meadow, it's probably been growing here undetected for about two years. So right now, scientists believe the meadow extends about the length of a basketball court. It's not continuous growth, but rather patches of dense clumps. And it's not just here. So it's spreading. It is spreading. If you look past this boat anchorage, you see all of those trees there. And we've discovered another six or seven individual patches of Halophila stipulaceae growing over there. It is a hardy seagrass. Sprigs can easily break off, float away, and survive. These fragments can actually float for quite a long time. 10 days and remain viable. As a matter of fact, just 10 miles north of Crandon Marina at Government Cut, Coral Morphology co-founder Colin Ford was cleaning the lens of the Coral City camera when something unusual caught his eye. I found this little sprig of seagrass that was just floating along at the water surface. I had never seen it before, so I took it. Ford brought it back to the lab where he planted it in one of his tanks. He had heard of an invasive seagrass species taking over the Caribbean. A quick Google search confirmed his find. It wasn't until I read the article that I said, wait a minute, this is, this is unusual because they say it's not in Florida yet, and clearly it's here now. Ford says the sprig quickly took root and began to grow, even becoming the snack of choice for a native emerald green crab living in the tank. You know, that suggests that, that it, it can provide a food source to some of our native species. Like Florida's manatee population that's been under stress for years with hundreds starving to death from a lack of food. Just because it's non-native doesn't necessarily mean that it is going to destroy our native ecosystem. In fact, seagrasses help purify water, filtering sediments that can then promote the growth of other seagrasses and can also capture carbon. But Campbell cautions, it's still too soon to know what the impact of this newcomer will be. And so the question is, is this invasive species able to provide the same benefits that our native seagrasses do? This is an open question and something that we're still trying to understand better. So right now, the plan is to monitor the Halophilus epilacea in and around Crandon Marina and to check out other local anchorages to see if it's made its way elsewhere right here in South Florida. At this point, scientists say there are no plans to remove it, fearing that could potentially cause more harm than good. We'll continue to follow this and update you. We have more on our website. Just scan that QR code 
It'll take you straight to the Don't Trash Our Treasure section on Local10.com. Something else to worry about and something else to keep our eye on. Uh, there's always something, right? But it just goes to show you that you're in this holding pattern now because we really don't know. And there's still right. so much we don't know. If it can survive symbiotically and work with our local seagrasses and provide food for our marine mm -hmm. ecosystem, then it's a good thing. But if it begins to take over like it has in the Caribbean, then it could be worrisome. Oh, my goodness. We'll All see. right. Well, we know you'll be following this one. Thank you, Louie.